Um, and you, you 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 probably remember from your from your is it your 53? I don't know if it's your is it your 5010 or something? The that statistic. 50, yeah. Um, you probably remember that uh, that if you have data, right? If you look at this data, if I open this up, it's just scores, right? Just think of these as yes. being random scores. I have random scores which uh, uh, amount to about 61 observations, right? So out of these random mm -hmm. scores, I'm just going to save this. Out of these random scores, what I do is I will I will read um, I'll read this data. I'll attempt to read this data, and um, essentially, the first step I'm doing is before if if I'm so if if I want to, because ideally one of the things I'd be doing from this information here is I would say maybe this is a random example here. If I, if I wanted to check if there any significant differences? Maybe I had uh, a test test two scores here, and I wanted to check if if there was any meaningful uh, difference in the scores. Right? What I would be doing here is bef before before drawing graphs and deducing to say there was a difference. What I need is some some value, right? That's going to uh, that's that's going to hint to somebody out there to say the result I got is not by chance, right? That's the p-value idea. Yes. Right. So the first thing I'll do is I'll check for I will check for the uh, I'll check for the normality, right? And what I like doing myself, there's different ways of checking for the whether the data is normally distributed or not. You can draw graphs and all those things. But what I prefer to do myself is I'll I will I'll use the Shapiro uh, test, right? So in this mm -hmm. case, all I do is it's a simple <coughs> thing. I'll just say I want to check to see if this is normally distributed. Now. If, if, you, if you do a normality test using this method, um, if you read up on literature, they'll tell you to say this p-value here, the p-value of this Shapiro-Wilk normality test is what's going to tell you whether or not the data is normally distributed, right? Um, I don't know if you remember these scores here, but this is telling us that this data is what? Is this, normal, is this a normal distribution? This value, 0 0.49. Yes, it is. Really? Two point, zero point, uh, zero point four nine. Now, <laughs> now it's me asking you this <laughs> question. They, were, they might ask you this question in the in the oral exam. You know, you know that some examiners will ask trick questions to see if you understand. Mm -hmm. They'll ask you, right? Uh, is this really? Is, if the p value is this value, is it normal or something? So, I don't know, right? Uh, Shapiro. <laughs> and okay, your, your Wikipedia page will have these values, right? And I mean, we can go with this. I mean, I, I would like to think the first hit here in the interest of time. You notice this it's saying the Shap I don't know if you can see this, but they're saying the Shap yeah, the Shapiro Wilkes test for normality is one of the three general normality tests designed to blah blah. blah. The test rejects the hypothesis of normality when the p value is less than or equal to 0 0.05. So if the p-value is less than 0 0.05, then the data is not normally distributed. If it's less than 0 0.05, this value here, 0 0.4, is greater than 0 0.05, right? So meaning that the, uh, this, is, this is good. So the test rejects the hypothesis of normality. Uh, when the value is less than 0 0.035. Okay, so it is normally distributed. Yeah, that's true. Um, so anyway, so that's the first part, right? The second part now is, in your case, because what the very first thing you're doing here is you are, uh, the, the very general picture is looking at the, um, is it the value of the, the SAS score, right? Holistically, for each institution. What, mm -hmm. what you do then is, you, you can refer to resources. If you just look up things like, uh, uh, I think we had a discussion uh, about this here, uh, and I was recently looking up this information. What statistical test to use, for instance. I, I believe I may have shared some, I may have shared some, um, some resources in the past, right? I think, uh, because I remember we had a discussion about this. Um, uh, so you notice that the people that have come up with uh, curated lists right some people have even come mm -hmm. up with flowcharts very nice flowcharts that will help you um determine the appropriate statistical test to use 
Right, so if we open up one of these things, um, uh, not very helpful here, but uh, choosing the correct statistical test. All right, so if, if, you, if, you look at, if you look at all these different factors that you take into account, right? Um, yes. What they're telling us here is uh, uh, the statistical test that you're going to perform, if let's say the number of dependent variables is one, but you have no independent variables, um, these are the different options that you have, right? Now, mm -hmm. it turns out that the different options that you have um, are also linked to the data type of the dependent variables, right? If you look at this. So your, your current data, like if you look at the SAS scores, let's say for UNSA, for instance, this, the SAS scores that you have, what, what, what sort of, uh, what, what values are we talking about here? Or, or when you're um, you seeing the SAS scores, let's say for UNSA, it's the dependent variable is just one. It's a SAS score, right? Is it? Yes. Okay. Um, that's the first part. The SAS score, within what range do they fall under? What is that value? Does it fall? Is, is it a range? Are they discrete values? Are they categorical values? They range from zero up to 100. Is it somewhere there? Yes, yes. All right. So it's an interval, right? Or it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a normal value, right? Mm -hmm. So. So the first thing is you have one dependent variable, which is the SAS score. There are no independent variables because you're just looking at the, the overall picture of the SAS scores. Before you yes. interpret them using those, uh, uh, there are people that have written about the, the classification of the SAS scores depending on which, which band they fall under, right? So if we are saying that you have one dependent variable and no independent variable and the data is uh, interval, um, then you notice here, right, that uh, it's likely that we'd have to settle for, and maybe this is not even, um, this is not very helpful here, but you notice mm -hmm. that you'd probably find yourself performing in one sample t-test. Is it? Do you understand this? Yes, I'm The continue. method that you had suggested, I'm going to scroll down to the method that you had suggested here, the cruz Wallis, right, method. Mm -hmm. You see what it's saying here? You use this method if, if you have one independent variable. What is this? If you have one independent variable which is associated with two or more levels. I don't know if this makes sense here. Also, right? Two levels meaning independent groups? Yes. Oh, independent variables. Yes, yeah, so, so, so here's the thing. Like, let's say you... Aha, uh -huh, this is a wonderful example. Let's say, so let's say you have UNSA scores, right? We have uh, UNSA scores. Uh, this is UNSA, right? And your data is such that you have uh, student one. Uh, student one, let's just work with maybe five students. Um, okay, this is, we know this is UNSA anyway. And then mm -hmm. we would just say, uh, this is student. And then we have a SAS score, right? Let's say this is 80, this is 70, this is 10, this is 50, and this is 6 or something. <laughs> Making these things up. So if you have the data which has this sort of structure, and we know this is normally distributed, like you said, um, then we, 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 we go in this branch here. <laughs> what we discussed uh, just now uh, here, mm -hmm. right? Because we don't have any independent variables. And the thing that we're measuring is it's a continuous value, all right? But okay. in the event that, and, and this applies to you, in the event that the data, you want to look at the data from a different angle, and you're going to do this because your questionnaire involve you collecting important demographic details, right? Like gender, yes. like level of study or something. The moment you are taking into, the moment you're saying we collected data using a questionnaire and these are the demographic factors we used, what you're telling people is that part of what you're going to do when you're analyzing the data is you are going to check to see if there was an influence coming from these different demographic factors. 
So let's say gender. Let's say you decide, you decide to dissect this. Uh, uh, you, you decide to analyze this information where you have gender in, in, into the equation. Maybe student number one is female, number two is female, three is male, four is male, and five is female. What you have now is the thing that you are measuring here is still continuous, is it? Right, the SAS score. Mm -hmm. But you have one independent variable, gender. Now, if you go to this curated list, you start scrolling down, what you will notice is, I don't know why this thing, computer is slowing down here, but what you will notice is that if I scroll down briefly here, I have, I have these different tests that I can perform when I have one independent variable. Observe, one independent variable with two levels, so two independent groups. Like it's male and female. I mean, I don't know if your questionnaire had other or something. I was filling out this weird questionnaire by a PhD student <laughs> from IDE, and they had an option of uh, prefer not to say or whatever. So that would be like three levels. So automatically, you wouldn't, you wouldn't even entertain uh, trying to consider whether you're going to conduct a two independent support T test or, or, or this other test, right? Or if you're going to conduct a chi-square test or something, right? Because you'd have two or more levels, but in, in your case, if you're analyzing gender, it's two levels, male or female. So you're going to come here mm -hmm. and what's going to tell you whether you're going to conduct, you're going to do a, a, two, a, a two independent sample test or something else is the data type of the dependent variable. What is the data type of independent variable? It's still, it's interval data. So meaning you're going to have to conduct a two independent sample t-test. Is this making sense here? Now, yes, yes. what you did, right? Maybe in, um, I'm trying to see here. Maybe in, uh, let's say, let's, let's just assume you, I, I don't know if you did this, but assuming, assuming part of what you did was you collected the uh, highest level of qualification, right? Highest mm -hmm. or, or qualification. Let's just assume qualification. Qualification will have things like, PhD, masters, bachelors, right? Uh, yes. I'll put bachelors again. Well, let's say that you intend maybe diploma and maybe certificate as well. And it's just an example. If you notice here, the levels are one, two, three, four, five, right? Because we're working with five mm -hmm. levels. What this means is that this this test that we, we, we said would use for trying to determine what sort of influence gender has, determining whether uh, gender has an impact on the results, essentially, is what you're saying. Because when you're explaining your results, you'd have to speak to the, uh, to the demographic factors, right? So, in this case, you'd come here, down where it's saying, um, uh, one independent variable, which is qualification, but the levels, it's two or more levels. These are independent groups, two or more levels, yeah? Because there's two or more levels here, we, and the dependent variable is still continuous, then what we're saying is that we're going to still settle for a method which is associated with interval and normal, right? So it will be a one-way ANOVA test. Is what you're, uh, that's the test you're performing. Now, now long story okay. short, what we are saying is that you are not just going to conduct a single statistical test because you are analyzing your data from so many different angles. Holistically, you're going to have to assess whether gender has an, has an impact on the results, whether, I don't know what other demographic factors you are looking at here, but uh, do you remember? Um, gender, level of education. Oh, the level of education is that, okay. Yes. What else? Mm -hmm. Number of years um, of lecturing. Right? Oh, of lecturing. But but yes, you, yes, you also yes. have. I think what's uh, for the lecturers is going to be a bit tricky because you, you, your some your, pop, your population. I mean, your, your sample is so small. But I'm, I'm I was more thinking about the, the interesting things for you are going to come out of the analysis of the students' data. Right. Um, so students, we have years. Right, but you also have experience, I believe, right? Experience using something. 
I don't know if you have the students. Them. Yeah, like experience using computers. I don't know. No. But what, what demographic factors do you have for students? Um, gender, uh -huh. the year, year of the study. school. Year of study? Year of study, yes. Uh -huh. And the school? And the school. What else? Easy. That's it? I think that's it. Right. So, well. wonderful. Now, here's the thing, right? For each of these different universities, what you're doing is your analysis has to be done in such a way that for data collected at Zikas, you do, you, you do uh, a holistic analysis where you're just looking at, uh, at, you're just looking at the SAS score. And then you're going to see whether there's an inf what sort of impact gender has, right? That's one thing. Mm -hmm. What about the year of study? What about the school, right? Um, um, so in all of these different instances here, like the year of study, obviously, are different levels. It's like for whom it's year number one up to five or something. I don't know what, what sort of years you have in your data. Um, but, but you get the point. The bottom line is that the, the types of tests you're going to perform. I mean, the holistic test, obviously, is, is easy, right? But, but the moment you start yes. trying to analyze your data from the perspective of these different demographic factors, then the tests will change. It gets even better. Um, I don't know if you're going to get to this stage here, but look at this. If we scroll down here, there are instances where you'd want to look at two or more independent, independent groups. So, so what we're saying here is that and the expectation, right? If you want to show to people that you, you truly know, you've truly mastered this, right? You're doing a master's. If you want to show to people that you truly understand this, you could also say, I'm, I'm going to do an analysis for, to see the, the influence of gender, right? On, on, on the overall result. How about, yes. is there an influence from the year of study? What about the school? And the assumption is that, I don't know about gender here, but the assumption is that the results are bound to be different when you look at different years, right? The, the people that are more likely to give you, uh, I mean, the, the fourth year, some people that have been introduced to research are more likely to, uh, to respond to these questions or have different associated SAS scores because they probably make extensive use of the library report or something. The schools might be different as well. Right? So, so I don't know about gender though. But something else you might want to do is to try and see if a combination of these factors Right? The influence of the combination of these factors, both gender, year of study, and school at the same time, or gender and year of study, gender and school, year of study and school, right? Um, if that makes sense. So assuming you want to figure out um, whether, whether there's an influence when you take into account gender, uh, year of study, and school at the same time, what this means is that you have three independent variables. The moment you have three independent variables is if you look at a resource like this, you scroll down to here where it says if the independent variables are two or more with independent groups, right? And the, um, the, the what do you call this? The dependent variable is still going to be the same here. It's, it's, in, it's, it's, it's really a continuous value. Then what you're conducting is a factorial ANOVA test. Are you beginning to understand what you need to do now? Yes, I am. Yes. It doesn't have to be R. I was, um, if I had time, we were going to do some examples together with you know, R and whatnot. But if you can share your data, I think it would be nice if you share your data, um, your raw data. I think you've already shared it, just in case, maybe just send me a link, a direct link to the data. Then the next time we are meeting, we can just do some. I think I, I saved it in the dissertation folder. That's fine. I'll find it then. Uh, then what I want to suggest is the next time we are meeting, we just want to verify that, that the, the p-values we've got in are actually correct, really. If they make, we just want to look at the test, really. So, so the idea is the test will give you the p-value, and then the p-value will help you explain the result, especially in your discussion. Okay. That's it.